I made a tutorial on this already, but that one's outdated and I thought I could do better. So here's how to set up a data pack in Minecraft 1.21. First of all, you'll need to install Visual Studio Code, or just any text editor. VS Code is just super convenient and easy to work with. If you are using it, I recommend installing a few extensions depending on the type of data pack you want to make. But no matter what kind it is, you should still get Data Pack Helper Plus. It's a super useful tool, and I use it all the time when making function data packs. So go ahead and install that. The next extension is Minecraft JSON Viewer for advancement data packs. This makes it easy to see what your advancements will look like in game. I imagine world gen tools would be useful for, well, world gen, but I don't make world gen data packs very often, so I don't use it. An optional extension is data pack icons. It just adds little icons for each folder and file. Okay, we're done with the extensions. Now let's look at how to actually set this up. First, find your .minecraft folder. And e a really easy way to do this is to go to Options, then Resource Packs, and click on Open Pack Folder. Then all you have to do is go back one to Minecraft, scroll down to Saves. Next, you can open this in Visual Studio Code and create the rest from there. So you can either press Command O to open a new folder, or go to File, Open Folder. Then you just need to find the folder you just created and click on Open. Now that you're here, make a new folder called Data. And also, not inside of Data, create one called pack.mcmeta. This basically just tells the game what features are in your data pack. Inside data, create two folders, one called Minecraft, the other can be called whatever you want. Note that neither of these can have any capital letters in them. If you are making a function data pack, here's what you'll do. Inside Minecraft, make a folder called tags. Inside that, make one called functions. This used to be function with an S, and that's one of the biggest reasons why my other tutorial was outdated. But now, it's been changed to function. Then create two new files called tick.json and load.json. Back in your namespace, make another folder called function. Again, this one also used to have an S, but as of 1.21, it's been changed to function. Now you make two more files called tick and load.mc function. MC function stands for Minecraft command function. To actually make it work, go back to tick and load.json and paste the code from the description. It should say values, then a set of brackets, and your whatever your namespace is called, and tick. This is inside of tick.json, you want it to be tick. Inside of load, paste it again, but change tick to load. You can call these whatever you want, just make sure you have the namespace and they are inside tick and load.json. This has to be the same name as whatever your main files are. What this will do is it will run tick every single game tick, and load what will run whenever the game is reloaded. So just save it all and you now have a function data pack. You can create other functions here and just put whatever you want in them. They have to be Minecraft commands and save it. And when you go back to the game, you can actually, after you reload, run those functions if you didn't forget to do this like I just did. So go back into pack.mcmeta and paste this from the description. The pack format changes for each version. It is different for the resource pack version, but the data pack version as of 1.21 is 48. You can enter a description here, and then once you're done, save it, go back into the game, slash reload, and then you can run those functions. Okay, we're done with that. Function data packs are pretty straightforward. 
but there are a total of 18 different types used by the vanilla data pack as of 1.21. Those include advancements, banner pattern, chat type, damage type, data packs, dimension type, enchantments, enchantment provider, jukebox song, loot table, painting variant, recipe, structure, tags, trim material, trim pattern, wolf variant, and world gen. A lot of these deserve their own separate video, but I'll do my best to explain them now. Advancements is pretty self-explanatory, just has advancements, be it custom or default. Banner pattern, also pretty self-explanatory. Chat type is a bunch of JSON files that control the type of chat messages you see in game. For example, I can do slash tell add s any message, and you can see this is gray and italic. It's different from just putting a message in chat like this. Damage type is a list of ways you can take damage in Minecraft. There's thorns and drowning and freezing and all the different types of damage. Data packs is just the two data packs that you see when creating a new world. You have the option to enable them. As far as I know, this can't be changed. I'm not entirely sure what dimension type does because I, as I said before, I don't make world gen data packs very often, and I don't know how to make custom dimensions, but it does have something to do with the way the dimensions generate. Enchantment is all of the enchantments in game. Enchantment provider is where you can get certain enchantments, like what mobs can have them on their weapons or in what loot chests you can find the enchantments. Jukebox song has all of the jukebox songs. Loot table has all the vanilla loot tables from archaeology, blocks, chests, everything. Painting variant is just like banner pattern. That you can add custom painting variants and modify existing ones. Recipe has all the recipes in the game. Some of these, like the nether wart block, are incredibly unfair. Like, you can craft nine nether wart into a block, but you can't craft a block back into nether wart. So I made a data pack recently that fixes that problem. I'll have it on screen now. I posted it on Planet Minecraft, so go check that out. Structure has all the structures. Tags, I'll make a separate video on that. Trim pattern and trim material are for the armor trims. Wolf variant is a new one that allows you to add wolf variants. And there's world gen. Yeah, I'm not explaining all these. You can add any of these to your data pack just by clicking on the add folder and naming it whatever you want. Make sure you put it, make sure you go into your namespace and add the folder for it. You can add whatever you want. If you're adding new things, you make the folder in your tutorial, in your namespace. If you're modifying the existing data pack, you want to add these, whatever you're modifying, to Minecraft. By the way, you may have noticed I have this, the Minecraft font. You can download that and change the font in VS Code. Just go to settings, search for font, just click on it here and type in the name of the font you want. Alright, now let's look at the online tools that are used for making data packs. These two are the ones that I use all the time. The first is mcstacker.net. I'll have a link to all of these in the, in the description. mcstacker is a website used for generating commands like give or summon or particle. Just put whatever you want in these boxes and it'll generate the item and then come up here, just gen put in whatever you want here and you can come up here, copy the command, paste it in game. The next one is miso.github.io. This has a whole bunch of generators used for all the JSON files that we just talked about. It's got advancement generators, banner pattern, tags. Some of them also give you a little preview of what your thing will look like. MC Stacker has a loot tables generator, but this one is much better. You can also use MC Stacker to generate commands for older versions. versions. Just click on whatever version you want, and it's the same thing. I will have a link to everything used in this video in the description. I hope you found this video helpful, 
and I'll see you all next time.